Hey guys, it is Mac again. Uh, I am here with Cheers, where everyone knows your game. Uh, we are very excited to uh, have back our friend, um, Rob Kirkvich. You may know him uh, from his extensive career. He is a director, he is a writer, has written episodes for NCIS New Orleans and for Happy Endings, one of the little underrated sitcoms <laughs> that I love. Also, you guys know him from uh, tons of work that he's done. He's been in The New Girl, he's been on Parks and Rec, he's been on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, he was Graham from Chasing Life, and of course, our favorite, Agent Sebastian Lund from NCIS New Orleans. But where I know him from is from his mom. I know him uh, from his parents. They came in and bought a little surprise birthday present for him. and. Uh, I guess she she spoke some good kind words about us and uh, Rob happened into our shop. And ever since then, we have been his friendly neighborhood game shop, you know, for for at least a little while. Uh, Rob, yeah. how are you doing, man? I'm great. I need to correct you. Oh, oh, um, oh, oh. I walked into your shop before my mother ever did. Oh, it, no, it, I'm so what sorry. Is yet another, <laughs> it is yet another moment where my mother almost beat me at something. Um, <laughs> Uh, I had gone in, I, you know, I had like been scoping it out. Cause, cause honestly, you know, it's, it's, it's like, there's two game shops in the whole city. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was thirsty for something. I think it was something <laughs> Imperial assault related and, uh, Rest in you know, Imperial Google map. Yeah. RIP, um, yeah. Google maps, uh, you know, listed you and, uh, plus one. And, uh, so I, I had gone to you and it was when my mother, you know how it is, like Christmas time rolls around and your parents are like, what do you want for Christmas? And you're like, I'm a 38-year-old man. Um, I'm not giving you a Christmas list. Uh, I feel bad because I could just go out and buy the things that I'm asking for. Um, so I was just like, just go. There's a game shop down the road from you because my parents live in the same areas where the shop is. Okay. Like, just go get me anything that says X-Wing on it. Anything. And that's what you they did. Of course, my mother being my mother, immediately entered the the store and from what I understand was like, I'm Rob Kirkovich's mother from NCIS New Orleans and just started holding court and uh, you guys hit it off, of course, because she's awesome. Um, but that, I just wanted to, there was a slight correction there. I I found you. <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. Uh, but I am glad that you guys have uh, uh, formed a bond, which- Oh, I'm no, no. Happy. Speaking of, how is Miss Mo? How is she doing? She's great. She's fully vaxxed up. She's ready to roll. Um, uh, my dad is still my dad, uh, so he could he's fine. Uh, you could put him <laughs> anywhere, and he'll just be my dad. Um, but they're uh, they're doing well. Yeah, thanks for asking. Awesome. No, that's 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 great. I uh, yeah, your mom was so um, so lovely. I I mean, please, I I. I I mean, no disrespect. No, definitely. Uh, you, you coming into the store and finding us? We, uh, I. Oh I no, I don't. Yeah, that. how dare but, uh, you? No, like <laughs> your mom just she just has a way, especially with her stories. She tells such great stories, and she always drops one on me. So yeah, I, uh, I always enjoy it. I always enjoy. Yeah, it. I think I got. I mean, I think I'm. It's it's ironic because I think if you were to put my mother on a stage, she would freeze up. Uh, she's talked, she's admitted as much, but I think <laughs> a lot of my performative nature comes from her. And actually my dad too. My dad was like, at, we would have dinner parties all the time because my mom loved to entertain and have people over. And so I was like just the little kid in the clip on tie sitting there. And I would just watch the two of them go back and forth, sitting on both sides of the table, just like riffing off each other and telling these crazy stories about their pasts and stuff. And so... A lot of who I am, I think, is 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 uh, I can attribute to to them uh, in their, especially my mother's sort of like gregarious nature. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, man, how's it been? Like we we uh, we're doing our quarterly check in with you, Rob, and it's been a while yeah. since we talked to you. You uh, you've been okay with everything going on so far? I mean, you know, it's a global pandemic, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, that we seem there's a light at the end of the tunnel that yes, feels very exactly. nice. Um, I was talking to some buddies yesterday. I was on Zoom playing uh, games the only way I can now, and um, with some friends of mine from high school, and uh, we have like a, a role playing like weekly session. And I was like, wait a minute, guys! I think we can actually start 
like plan like looking we can allow ourselves to look at a calendar right and start the discussions of how we can see each other in person and actually play this thing in person and right. so that felt really good like that was a moment that i don't think i allowed myself to feel um up until last night so uh yeah i feel i feel good you know um our show is coming to an end uh ncis new orleans got the old proverbial axe it's ironic uh, we were we've been killed uh yeah. <laughs> we've solved so many crimes that we couldn't solve our own <laughs> um so so that's ending so you know time to move on um and uh but you know so it's an interesting strange time uh but i feel feel good no well that, look honestly i i know because with your your tons of talents that you have under your belt oh god you're, you're gonna you're gonna find all sorts of great stuff to do um i, I know you probably have tons of stuff already lined up but that That'd is be not cool. why you're here uh, let's long. go with let's go with that <laughs> <laughs> come on rob i i i know someone someone of your caliber i i just i feel it in my bones you you got stuff going thank you, you. i appreciate that going. and uh but that once again 100 not what we're here for we're here to talk some games so let's talk some games please god let's um, do it the last time i checked in with you sir we were talking about a little game from uh fantasy flight games called marvel champions mm -hmm. um i would like to ask uh uh what do you think of the game what would you if if I were a brand new player, didn't know anything about any of these games, would you recommend it to me? What do you like about it? I would. I actually just bought it for a friend of mine uh, who works on the crew of NCIS New Orleans, and he uh, he had to take off time for workers' comp. He, he got an injury on set, and so I swung by your place, bought a copy of it, and then brought it over to him. Um, I think... Uh, you know, I got it for him because he couldn't really leave the house except doing his like, um, uh, what was it called? Not PE, -E. uh, PT, PT. Thank you. Um, he and so I love that the game is single player. Mm -hmm. um, I played it a couple times multiplayer. I played it once on uh, Tabletop Simulator uh, multiplayer, but I really spent some time with it single player during the the pandemic. Um, not like a ton. Like I'm no expert on it. I was still playing with a lot, of, like whatever the pre-built recommendations mm -hmm. in, the, in the core box are, um, and still wrapping my mind around it. I mean, it's a typical, it's an FFG game, right? So right. you Tons play it the first time, and you're <laughs> yeah, and you're like thirty minutes in, and you're like, I think I understand what, and then you get beaten, you get beaten by like somebody who's not even there, you get right. beaten by like a deck of cards, and then. Um, you sort of start to put the pieces together and you realize how cool and, and how intricate it can be. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. But again, I haven't dipped, I haven't allowed myself to go into any of the expansions or anything like that yet, even though I keep seeing them on the shelf and being like, I probably should get Captain America. I mean, that's just, but I've uh, never, good. I've, it's a moral imperative. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even played with the all the decks that they recommend in the box <laughs> nor have i tried to make my own deck from the cards that i have in the core set but i look at that box and when you open it up and you see that huge gap of where yes. like more cards can can right, fit i'm right. like oh, i have to fill this this, this is ridiculous <laughs> no like seriously um we uh we actually have a little group here at the store uh of of the employees that play and um we love it we yeah. love it so much because like uh, the, the designers of the of the game really did a, a great job of leaving such uh, a good amount of open space for them to be able to create other things that will make the game feel fresh, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's still using the same that's great uh, tried and true methods that they've already developed. Now, is it um, is it technically is it an LCG? Is that what it is? So that's what they call it. It is a living okay. card game, an LCG. But at its heart, it is it is a um, it's a deck builder, you know, because yeah. you're 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 not necessarily buying cards from the a common deck and everyone's using those, but essentially you are because it's like oh well you know we're all using the same pool of cards to make our deck. We just make our deck ahead of time, or you could just buy your own set and make your own deck out of that same pool that everyone else. Yeah, has. I love I love the. Um... The cooperative nature of it too like i Absolutely, love yeah. that the they found a ffg is so good at this in terms of thematics when 
they may even though you're just you know you're playing with a bunch of cards on a table but you still manage to somehow get that like marvel feel where it's like right. well spider-man just set up this one attack so now she hulk can come in and like lay the hammer down like the way that they would you can imagine the fight going mm-hmm. on the pages of a comic or in a movie they somehow managed to find a way to play that out with just cards, which I thought was like super impressive. So I know because no. I know there's this big like FFG shakeup where Atomic Mass Games got a bunch of the miniature stuff, but FFG still has like Marvel Champions is still like exactly yes theirs. So, right. So so um the they they had a a, a press conference uh, virtually for uh, Fantasy Flight um, announcing that or Asmo Day announcing that they were shifting all the miniature games to Atomic Mass Games because right. they are miniatures people. And yeah. Fantasy Flight has never been a miniatures company. They've always yeah. been a board game company first. Yeah, from what I understand, they sort of got like kind of taken aback at how well X-Wing sold and were like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, they did like scrambling if you look at their, to keep up. Yeah, if you look at their track record, usually FFG and that usually they'll, they'll dry up after like three years or something like, Oh, yeah. well, you know, we're going to pass this on to some other company now. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. But X wing was such a popular game that it's, it's lasted since its inception, which what? Oh my God. Uh, I think it's like 2014 or 2015, something like that. Yeah. It's, it's been a minute. Like we're looking like almost, we're looking at almost like, you know, uh, five six years you know and yeah that's, well i mean and they've already got a second edition now they've had to like reboot it at least once because things oh, got crazy it, it got it got muddied it yeah. definitely got muddied but i'm so happy that you mentioned x-wing because that is my next question oh great let's do it <laughs> always down so, let's talk some x-wing right so are you excited about the um the new sets that are coming out they have the new squadrons which are according to my my handy sheet here the, uh sky uh, strike Bar- academy uh Fugitives collaborators and, no wait hold uh-huh. on collaborators and some, some something what's the scum one called fugitives and collaborators and what's the last one this is the most important one this is from this is from rebels man it's not heralds of hope oh it's a uh, phoenix cell boom my boy my Nailed boy it. so how do you feel about like them bringing the rebels uh um animated series into x-wing I think it's amazing. I mean, I love both of those things. So mm-hmm. the fact that they're smashed together is <laughs> wonderful for me. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, do I own uh, all of those ships individually? Yeah. Uh, am I going to buy all three packs? Yes, you're damn right. Uh, but I'm super amped. I think it's oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, the paint schemes look amazing. The paint, then, scheme, the, the paint schemes look amazing. You're so great. right about that. And then... But it's like, do I need a second Hawk or whatever that thing's called? Like the, the Hawk 290 in the scum pack? Do I need three uh, Y-Wings that I'll now own? Yes. Uh, probably not, but yes. yes this is all I do. I, I Listen, I have an obsessive personality, so um, <laughs> it's like all or nothing on stuff like this. And X-Wing has basically for like the last two years at least been like consuming most of my atten- – like I'm in the car. I'm listening to podcasts about it. I'm eating breakfast. I'm watching some tournament on Twitch. You're uh-huh. like, I'm I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm deep. Bro, there ain't nothing wrong with that. No. There's and then and then it's like a smattering of that. Uh, uh, sorry. And then there's a smattering of um, more FFG. Uh, they should be a sponsor. Uh, they should. Um, okay. Of of uh, uh, Edge of the Empire. Uh, the 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 Star Wars role playing mm-hmm. thing that they have. Um, I just started GMing for the first time in my life. Are you serious, really? Yeah. Bro, you didn't tell me this. Oh, I... I it's a whole new world. This. It's amazing. We need to know this. We yeah. need to know this. So we're so, going to stop the interview, and you need to tell us what is Rob's experience with game mastering. It's... I, I've been terrified of it for so long. I've only played. I've only been a, like a... I've only been PCs for my whole life. Uh-huh. And I hit 40, and I was like, I'm... I'm Game mastering. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've earned this. So yeah, um, uh, my the we were before we before we officially started. I was telling you about um, my high school buddies who I'll I'll meet with weekly, and we sort of rotate out different systems and different GMs and stuff. And mostly out of the four of us, it bounces back and forth between these two guys who are either running D and D or one guy like created his own system that he wanted to test out. So we were doing that for a while. 
And we did some Edge of the Empire with one of the other guys GMing it. And finally, it was like, I want to, like, honestly, we'd been doing it. And then the pandemic started. We kind of dropped off. Then the pandemic started. And it's been almost weekly. You know, it was just one of those things where you're like, this is therapy. This right. No, is, absolutely. Like, yeah. I need this right now. This is like one of the only social interactions I have apart from work. Um, I got to do this. And so I was finally was like, you know what? I think I'm ready. I'm going to GM. I, I want to try this. Star Wars, uh, I could probably do 5th edition uh, D&D, but Star Wars is, like, my heart. So, mm -hmm. it's like, I'll know more, I'll have more, like, instinctive uh, decision-making process. I, I think it'll just come to me a little bit easier. Yeah, absolutely. And also, the thing I really appreciate about the FFG, I mean, I guess it's technically the Genesis system now, or whatever you want to call it, but I know it started with, with Edge of the Empire, is the narrative the narrative uh, side to it, mm -hmm. and I love that they really stress. And I'm sure, I'm sure, um, Wizards does this with with Dungeons and Dragons at this point. But I love that they stress like the narrative is the thing that matters the most. Don't worry if you don't know the rule. Don't pause the game to book dive and figure it out. Like just roll with it. Look it up later. Change it for the next time if you got it wrong. You know. Right. Right. And. You know, I also, you know, I dabble in, in, in writing, in screenwriting. And so it just felt like the perfect kind of marriage for me because I was coming up with, I, I, I definitely, I didn't want to jump full deep end. So I'm using a, an adventure module, like a pre-written module. Right. Um, that's called Mask of the Pirate Queen. Oh, um, no, that's a good one with the, the, the Twilight on the cover. Yeah, no, that's, I think that might be Jewel of Yavin. Yavin, that's, um, that's right, that's right. Uh, Mask of the Pirate Queen on the cover has... What is a masked pirate queen? I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just needed something that was going to be like, like a baseline that then I could sort of be like, oh, here I could do this, here I could do this, but I'll always have this thing that I can come back to. Um, instead of just going full deep end and be like, I'm creating my own world, I'm creating my own character, you know, all that stuff. I need like the stat blocks. I need that that kind of um, safety net. Mm -hmm. But it's been really great. I mean, I love I love doing improv. Uh, I love writing and I love playing like role playing games and rolling dice. So it's just been like the perf. Like, I didn't actually know how I it's like a I feel like it's like a duck to water kind of situation. Like, it felt so natural to do it. I've only done three or four sessions. Uh huh. Um, and actually, what we did was, um, we're calling it so, so I don't want to get too, I don't want to bore people too much, but, but, um, you know, the, the last time we played. Uh, edge of the empire was we all were in a ship that was like a we called the glaive right and so what i wanted to do in this new campaign was make it like one of those 90s eu books uh that was like tales from java's palace or tales uh -huh. from uh most Eisley cantina like all those things yeah. so i have tales from the glaive so they're playing as brand new characters but eventually they have come across the ship that we used in the other campaign Oh, I love it, dude. And so so the idea is that like whenever one of us will tag in, uh -huh. um, if we're going to start a new campaign, it'll be still called Tales of the Glaive, where somehow that ship is going to factor into it. So it's just one of those, as if you got one of those books where every chapter is like a new adventure that's surrounding this one ship that's like a YT-2400 that's completely beat up and, you know. <laughs> um, so what, what we just, what just happened was, um, I led them, I led the players to a certain point where they finally found the glaive. They didn't know it was, you know, it's like three sessions in and, and I had them find it. And they, they, they walked inside at the very end of the session, they searched around and they opened up a, a closet and they found one of the PCs from the other campaign that was a droid all busted up like C-3PO. And they like, I'm like, you start them up. I think I made them roll or it didn't matter. I was going to make it happen regardless. Right. Uh, and they started up and adjusted its head is like, let me explain. And then I, <laughs> and then I was like, we cut. And then I had the old GM tag in and now uh -huh. he is running the flashback for what, ha what got us to this point with the ship. Um, Bro, oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Oh so my God. Yeah. That's the stuff that like, I'm really like jazzed about is like all this sort of narrative stuff and telling the story. And, you know, there was one session we did that was mostly just like a speeder chase mm -hmm. um, that is, it's not in the module. I just realized like they're in the city. 
I'm going to give them a speeder. Let's see what happens. And then, like, we've played out this whole speeder chase thing that I kind of had half figured out. But based off of their decisions, I was improvising off. It, like, it, it just felt awesome. It's just – I get why people do it now. No, it, it like, 100%. Like, I – I um, <laughs> it's really funny because a uh, um, a really uh a really good friend of mine, um, they they uh, work with the show, and they're always like Mac. You know when people talk about role playing games, that's like when you light up the most. And I'm like, I know, but it's so cool because I love these stories. They're so visceral to yeah. you, and like you get this really amazing experience, even though you know it's not real. It feels real in the moment and like you 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 have this really great story that you're able to tell me with all these like pops and like uh flourishes and things like that and like it was just a make-believe story for you and your friends at the time but man hearing it it felt real to me just listening to the oh god and i love the the mechanics like like i i really love when like um some game masters will do uh what what is the what's the film term um uh, it's when like you start in action. Um, oh, like in media res or whatever. In media res, yeah. Like when you use some like film techniques to help aid in a a, a theater of the mind story, mm -hmm. and like when you do it well, it works so great. Oh yeah. God, Rob, you made my night, bro. Oh, oh that's love great. it. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it honestly, it it feels the same if you're on stage doing like an improv show or if you're reading a script or watching a movie even like pacing is a thing yes. like pacing is real even in role-playing games mm -hmm. and so you know you can be in the middle of some encounter and as the gm you you know and you and i'm sure like as players too you feel it like every once in a while you hit a point where you're like oh i'm just rolling dice now like it right. just where, where the, the narrative of it and the story of it kind of falls away and you're just like, I don't know, you know, and usually it's towards the end of the night when you're like, we've been playing for four hours, I'm yeah. dead, you know. But so the challenge is to sort of, that, that I love about it is sort of the pacing of it and realize like, this encounter is taking forever. Um, it's time to just, it's time to cut bait. Like, I don't yeah. care what I had planned in terms of like, and around this corner is a rancor, whatever it is. <laughs> it's just like, no, you know what? Now there's not because we have to like, the story is the most important thing and Absolutely. hopefully that is what will then keep the players like interested and also what i love that i've been trying to do is really looking at each player character and what they have for their strengths and their weaknesses and stuff and i'm sure this is not a novel idea i'm sure i'm not this is probably like anyone who's gm'd or dm'd or whatever is like yeah no crap but <laughs> to look to look at their sheets and be like well they're good at this uh -huh. they're good at that like, so how can I somehow find a way to highlight them mm -hmm. in this next session? So that at least it's like, I know you're the stealth guy. Like, there's one guy who plays like a changeling in, a, in, this, in this, you know, new campaign. It's like, but he's got like, he's not the best combatant. He's not the best, you know, this changeling thing is what he's really all about. So it's like, I don't want to just have, you know, constantly getting into firefights because he's just going to sit there and be like, I don't know. I don't have any talents for this. I don't you know, like none of nothing I have really bolsters this. Mm -hmm. um, so like during the during the speeder chase, like in the in the moment, I was like, oh, wait, you know what? There's there, you're being chased by like the equivalent of like cops. And I think they there's like I said, like there's the there's like the Star Wars equivalent, of like a CB radio mm -hmm. in the thing. Like and so he was like, oh, and he grabbed it and he started talking to the cops that were chasing them in like change. Like he changelinged his like throat. To like right. sound like a cop, like I don't know what he did. I can't remember. He rolled something and it worked. Um, <laughs> and he was like, you know, there's no need to follow us. You can break. You can peel off. And so like it got like one full speeder full of of cops to just like peel off and and just get out of the fight. Yeah. So like trying to find those moments, like even though it's like an action sequence, yes. He his character isn't built for that, but his character is built to like deceive. So why not figure out a way? So I don't know. It was just like I'm not. It doesn't. I don't mean for it to sound like a like a toot my own horn thing, but it's just so fun to come up with ways to incorporate all the different characters and all the different attributes. You know, so it's more than just oh, like a, it's another scene with pew pew in it or whatever. No, no, absolutely. And I, I think I think that also 
uh, lends to a lot of your experience as, as a writer, you know, and, and your experience as, as, as a director. Like, you're right. Pacing is a huge thing. But it also, it feels great to be the star every once in a while. And yeah. like, doing that for your players just means that you are a more aware and mature game master. Oh, and, like, great. That's, that's, that's fantastic. No, dude, that's your... awesome, bro. Yeah, it's, oh, been, God. it's been really... It's been really fun. Like I've really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I'm not the the only thing is like I'm not the best like reader. Uh mm -hmm. and some of these books are like, you know, there's a lot to, to it is intense to sift through. So it's taken me like it takes like a lot of time for me to like look through and be like, what what is going on? <laughs> like what are these rules? Um, but again, they do such a good job at sort of saying to you, like, just go with it. Like, just go with it. It's okay. <laughs> Like, just rule it however you think it should be ruled in the moment. Don't worry about, like, well, this technically should be three purple dice of difficulty versus two purple dice. Like, whatever. Like, you whatever know, feel, yeah. spend the destiny points, like, constantly to just always do something new narratively. I love, too, that the system encourages everybody to work together. I feel like yes. I've played a lot of D&D, &D, various editions, where it's almost felt like adversarial between the players and the and the dm mm -hmm. not not like real bad not as bad as i've heard it can get uh, i'm talking to other people but there's like a us versus the dm kind of like thing but i just love that in 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 the star wars system it's like all right well i rolled a despair what should we do and mm -hmm. like everyone talks about it and there doesn't feel like for the most part my experience is playing the game has been and granted it's been with the same three people who I've known for like thirty years, but the there's never any word like all right. Well, the the player is the one who rolled the despair, so they're the one being like, I don't think it should be that bad. I think I trip, you know, whatever it is. Whereas, <laughs> whereas everybody's working, it's like, well, it should really be like you know, you you like dislocated your shoulder on this crate or whatever. Right. Um, so it's been really it's been really fun. It's been awesome. No, that's so, dude, that's um, so cool. I don't... So uh, I, I do have a one burning question for you uh, yeah. to kind of switch gears. Um, I'm so happy that we talked about role-playing games. Though. I know, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do have a burning question. It's one of my, uh, this is our make or break moment, Rob. Okay. So if uh, if you answer incorrectly, then we just end the interview and there's just- That's fair. I'll questions. go, yeah, I'll fall asleep weeping. Burning question, Baby Yoda uh -huh. or Grogu, which is correct. <sighs> This is tough. It is. This is tougher it than is. I was anticipating. Mm. Um, I have yet to switch over to Grogu in my mind. I, I don't. I'm not gonna begrudge. I'm not gonna begrogu anybody <laughs> for 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 immediately adopting it. And it, yeah, that is that is his name or her name. I don't, I don't even know. We don't know. We don't know the gender. We don't, we don't know. I think, I think it's, a I think he called, they call him a him a lot, I guess. So, um, but maybe they're wrong. Um, <laughs> I, so, so if you, if you're one of those people that's like straight up, like, you know, you absorb new it, canonical information immediately, then great. Um, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I have no problem with the fact that they named him. No, I, I have no problem. I have no problem with them giving him a name, but uh, uh, he will always be Baby Yoda in my heart, mm -hmm. and uh, my heart is all that matters for me. <laughs> Your heart is all that matters to me too. I think that's great. <laughs> okay, so obviously we've talked uh, about Marvel Champions. We've talked about X Wing. Um, we've talked about role playing games, which I'm super surprised about that it, it went to that, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, are there any other games on your radar right now that you're looking forward to either checking out or you really want to play? Um, I don't think so. I did. I gave that Chronicles of Crime game a spin. If you okay, wanted to talk about that, yeah. What did you think? Uh, it's cool. So, so, so you know, you had you had sort of uh, gifted me very generously this. Uh, Chronicles of Crime game. Uh, I actually have the box here, so I won't forget. By Lucky Lucky Duck Games. Yes. Um, you know, partially as a lark because I play a uh, forensic expert on television. Of course. <laughs> um, and so it was fun. It was cool. I, I never played anything like it. Um, there's a lot of QR code scanning mm -hmm. um, as you sort of try to solve crimes. There's also, I didn't realize there was going to be like a VR component. Where, yeah, you get to walk through the crime scene. Yeah, so I didn't have I I foolishly bought the PlayStation VR headset 
when Squadrons came out. Um, and uh, I've I've used it like three times. It was not a smart purchase. Um, <laughs> it has not paid itself back yet. And uh, unfortunately, my wife has knows it because um, I found that out uh, the other day. <laughs> it's like, you don't know how little I've played that thing. And she's like, I know. I know. <laughs> cool. Look great. Cool, cool. Um, All right. Yeah. Um, but so I didn't have any, um, headset thing to plug into the phone. Mm -hmm. So I just did it where you hold the phone up and you kind of look around the crime scene. Um, but it was cool. It was cool. I, I like that it's one player obviously cause I'm just here, but, um, I'd be curious to see how it plays with, with, uh, multiple people. Um, but apart from that, I'm trying to think, I don't, um, God. I mean, I've been wanting to play more outer rim. Not to bring it always back to FFG. I know there are other companies out there, but um, I've only played that a couple times. And, Outer Rim is uh, actually a really dope game. Like it's it it feels like a, a reskin of the Firefly um, game yes, from Real Force. It 9, does, yeah. But it's still really good in its own right. Um, another really good one from FFG I really like is Star Wars Rebellion. Did you, have you seen that one? I want to play that. That's just two player, right? That's just sort of like it's just two yeah. player and one side. You recreate the original three films and you play through that. Right, but you can veer off. Yes, of the, exactly. Actually, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, oh, it's so cool, dude. Um, yeah, I've been wanting yeah, to do. A buddy of mine has that, and we've been talking about trying to play it. You guys should totally do it. Um, yeah, if you get a chance to play it, like that's you're like Fantasy Flight, like. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to gush about them all the time either, but they put out quality games. They, they do really a good do. job. I mean, they they have such a good grasp of, um, you know, I mentioned it before with the thematics, but they have such a good job of, like, recognizing the property that they have mm -hmm. and designing a game around that property or around that specific corner of that property uh, that makes it, it just elevates it, right? Like, without a rim... The few times that I've played it, you know, it's a game that's a like the characters you can be. It's all like you're all it's all scum and villainy, right? You're mm -hmm. like bounty hunters or you're smugglers or you're all these things. And the opportunities that the game gives you to really act as if the you know you're not role playing, obviously, but but the the shady stuff you can do and the way that you can sort of like stab people in the back and the way you can right. kind of like right. it's just it fits the theme so well. I also played. Um, I only did it played for one night, but I did. Uh, I, is is it call time? Call t what's the what's the new magic set? Yeah, call time, the Viking set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did one of those. It was awesome. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was oh, you guys so played magic on on uh, Zoom? Uh, no, I played. No, we didn't do it on Zoom. We did it on um, whatever or the arena, whatever the arena? official okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing is. Did you so, like it? Oh yeah, it was awesome. It was great. I'm cool. not. I'm not great at magic. My these it's other. It's the same crew. Mm -hmm. There's two guys that have been playing uh magic since i mean we've all been playing since high school but these guys two of these guys have been on it since like have like never stopped like i would kind of dip in and dip out dip in and dip out right. these guys would like go to stores do all that stuff and or and also get into before it was even called arena whatever the other MTG iteration online yeah yeah play that for years you know mm -hmm. so um i get destroyed almost every single time um <laughs> But I love looking at the art. I mean, I love like dude. The animation from Arena is really, really. I kind of wish that they went even further with some of that in, mm -hmm. in in Arena, where they went like full like old school battle chess on like. Oh, I remember. You remember the Queen from Battle Chess, and she would like saunter out and just like eliminate somebody with like lightning. Or yeah, whatever. I want to see like I want to see like more like I want to see like a Shivan dragon come in and just like scorch the earth, and you know I want to see like bigger moments. But that's fine. Yeah. That's that's a separate thing. That's not what happens in the game. They I know they want to simulate as if you're sitting across the table, but um, but I just love the theme of it this time around with like everything looks like a Judas Priest cover, uh, like album cover. Like I love the metal kind of Viking thing. I love that they got like Mastodon. To do yeah, like they had a bunch of like awesome like metal bands like advertise yes. the game. And yes. Like yeah, this is like a uh, uh, a card game that we found out about, but like look at this artwork, it's metal. I'm like dude, yeah, it is metal. I love it. yeah. My my buddy, a good buddy that I met here uh, through Crescent City Comics, actually, he was just like he was just sending me videos of like check out Mastodon, man, and it just looked like they had never even seen this before. The camera started rolling, but like. Oh man, this is this thing. This is crazy looking. Like they yeah. were super into it. it was, 
Uh, it was it was such a good ad campaign from them. Yeah, and it was and and the mechanics of it, I I can't remember what the big new thing on it, at least new to me was. Um, but there was a couple of, I think there's some like double sided cards in it or something yeah, like the flip cards. Mm-hmm. Um, which is kind of novel uh, to me and my experience in the game. But I I've been having fun every once in a while jumping onto arena. I love that jump uh, jump start thing that they did. Jump start's a lot of fun. I wish they would re. Uh, reprint that set because it was such a great way to get people into it. It's like, oh, Rob, you want to play some magic tonight? Let's buy four packs of Jumpstart. I'm going to slap two together. You're going to slap two together and we're going to play. And that's it. I that's loved our it. evening. Yeah. Uh, I really thought that was such a great idea. I hope they do it again. Um, it was- so uh, now that uh, NCIS New Orleans is over, do you have any like uh, highlights from your career here in New Orleans? I mean, it's been, it's been an amazing run. It, the problem is that I've gotten like spoiled because uh, NCIS was my first series regular uh, job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm just like, oh, all right. So I guess every show I do will just go for over 150 episodes. Is that what usually happens? Uh-huh. Uh, and it's not, I'm told. Uh, <laughs> so, Unless so, you're part of the cast of Supernatural. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so those guys are like 105. I mean, they still look great. Um, right. <laughs> that, um, no, I mean, highlights are honestly... The crew, which is, I want to say, 98% New Orleans locals, mm-hmm. uh, have been so awesome from the get-go. I mean, like, I never, I guess I never really thought about it, but but what, what, a, what a wonderful surprise to meet all these people who are so, like, quirky and weird and artists in their own right, and, and it, that, that was, I would say that would be the biggest highlight, would be, like, the... The friends I made along the way, um, and it's, I know it's cheesy, but so many nerds, so many people to like just talk about the most random stuff with, and to have fun with on set every day. And then, I mean, besides that, the fact that somehow somewhere along the line, a a person decided that it'd be okay to give my character like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Not that like, and it's a very, I have very conflicting feelings about guns and stuff like that. Like, I, I don't think I could ever own one in my real life, but I definitely grew up watching Commando and Rambo and Tango and Cash and all these. Tango so it's, and Cash. I mean, it's a masterpiece. That uh, is, right. So the idea of running around and doing action and all that stuff, like I never thought that that would ever be a part of my resume or something that I would ever get to do. And the fact that, in season three, they told me, hey, there's going to be an episode. You get kidnapped. Uh, and by the end of that episode, because of your experience, you're going to realize, like, you don't want to just be in the lab um, mm-hmm. anymore. Because up to that point, I was doing, you know, two or three scenes every episode. Come visit the quirky guy in the lab. He's going to be funny. He's going to go off on a tangent. Blah, 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 blah. And then that's it. The fact that they were like, no, now we're going to, like, have you... Um, shoot a guy out of a, a helicopter <laughs> you know it's like oh uh, okay oh, oh, all right. <laughs> and, and so I would, in my brain i was like you know it'd be cool if they finally were like all right yeah sebastian come along and just to see what would happen because i love the idea of a character being out of his element and how it, would a character like that deal with with a bigger dangerous situation and the fact that they actually came to me at the beginning of that season three and they're like this is what we're thinking I like, I thought I had dreamt it, honestly. I know that's super cheesy to say. I woke up the next day. I was like, I just want to make sure, what did I actually dream and what actually happened yesterday? And no, yeah, they actually said that this is the plan. Um, Because that just opened things up for me immensely. Not just from like an acting standpoint, but just like the fun that I was having and the ridiculous stuff that I got to do. And I like ran over a car at one point. Uh, which didn't even make it into an episode. There was like, we were like chasing some guy who was running away and, and I'm like rounding the corner into a parking garage and this sedan just goes and like stops. And my stunt guy, who's amazing, uh, did it. Like the car came to a screeching halt just as he timed it where he jumped up went boom, 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 and jumped over the length, like ran up the length of the car and landed. Oh my God. And I just sat there. I was like, he's amazing. I can't. It's great. But then the then we were waiting. I think we were waiting for another cast member to show up mm-hmm. uh, from from a base camp. And so the stunt coordinator was like, you were waiting. Do you want to try one where you do it? And I was like, I, 
yeah okay you know we're not going to do the thing where the car drives and stops we'll just keep that car parked and then do the run over and i did it like i couldn't believe that i did it uh it just ran like and it, you thought actually when i hear it uh described with my own voice it sounds like stupid and not that no hard. dude it's like oh you it's ran over a stationary car feelings man it's one of those visceral feelings from yeah. a, an imaginary event yeah that's awesome yeah so it's so like boom, 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 and, land, and then and then landed and like the crew blur, like broke out into applause like i couldn't i like i kind of skimmed my i kind of scraped the skin off my knuckles but that was fine like i think it looked fine <laughs> uh but because i'm a tall lanky man so my knees uh aren't great uh <laughs> so <laughs> they're not what i would call a uh, pristine knees uh at this point but they held up and i did it and uh, and then I, you know, a couple weeks later, get the episode. I'm like ready to watch it, and it cuts. It like I'm oh, like no. far <laughs> cut to like like running up and catching the person. And I like caught, I I can't remember if I te- I think I got the next time I talked to the showrunner. I was like, man, I ran over a car. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds kind of like lame. Like I ran over a parked car, but that was like harder than I thought it was gonna be, and. Everyone seemed really into it. What happened? And he was like, it was just too cool. <laughs> it was just too cool. <laughs> no, was like, you're just, love. Um, you gotta you gotta stay in your lane. <laughs> he's like, it wasn't and honestly, like it was hard to argue with him because he was like, if you had landed and then said, like, did you just see what I did? <laughs> like, then that would have been more like your character. Uh-huh. But you just like ran over a car, like power landed and kept going. And he was like, I couldn't, I couldn't use it. It just didn't feel like your character. And I was like, I... Oh no! It's like it pisses me off that you're kind of right about this. Um, but anyway, that's a long way of saying just the the adventure of um, of getting to do more than what I had originally uh, thought was going to happen on this show. What my role was going to be um, was sort of like a secondary highlight. Dude, that's that's such a cool story, man. Oh my the, god! The amount of stuff that I've gotten to do uh, has been such a like a a gift. I'm really going to miss it in terms of just finding it like this season, not so much only because the pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, like so much of the budget, like peek behind the curtains, as far as I can tell, a lot of the budget on anything shooting right now is allocated to COVID and it yeah. has to be, I mean, there's nothing yeah, it has to, yeah. It ha- for testing and all that stuff. It's incredibly expensive. Well, so we've been, yeah, everything I've gotten to do has just been, has been awesome. No, that's so great, dude. Um, Speaking of uh, things that you uh, have uh, gotten to do while here, last yeah. time we talked to you, you were talking about a kind of personal project that you had the help from uh, the crew of NCIS New Orleans oh, yeah. uh, work on. It was a fantasy project. Um, any any more traction on that? I have not. It was a short film uh, where I played an elf that was actually based on that character we were talking about earlier who thought he had the charisma of 20. Um <laughs> No, it's a short film. I I had not had the time or honestly the um the guts to go up to people during the last year and be like, I know things are crazy. <laughs> um, do you want to maybe talk about color timing this short uh where I play an elf? Um, you know, it's kind of been hard to sort of get that together. I have a sneaking suspicion that once I'm uh unemployed, uh that thing's going to shoot to the top of my priority list. <laughs> um but yeah, I was I was also trying to develop this board game for it, or that was just using it as sort of inspiration. Um, that traction has also been hard to come by uh, during the current events. Um, it, I kind of got waylaid by a couple other things. I was just straight up just like scripts that I was writing. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I started working on like a pitch doc for it. I came up. I I found um, what's the website where you can go and you can have miniatures uh, made, like custom minis made. Um, uh, Hero Forge? Yes. So I went on a Hero Forge. I spent maybe three days uh, just meticulously creating Hero Forge characters uh, <laughs> for this pitch document, you know, like a pitch deck that I'm going to make for this game. Uh-huh. It's essentially going to hopefully be like an updated um, uh, VHS board game. Um, spent a lot of time watching on YouTube old VHS board game footage and just relishing in <laughs> how incredibly... Uh, wonderfully cheesy those things were. I think it'd be really, I feel like there's a, there's a tiny little small space 
where you could make the equivalent of a VHS game, but using an iPad app with pre-filmed footage uh, that coincides with what's going on on the table. No, absolutely. Um, and, uh, uh, we, uh, no, it's it's like there is a market for that. There is a market for that kind of like um, uh, pre-taped um, experience where you make choices. Like a, even with uh, remember that uh, that that Black Mirror episode where mm -hmm. oh yeah, uh, I haven't watched that one, but the one where you can kind of like interact. yeah, where you go, yeah. that that interactivity is a thing. Like they just came out with another one. But it's bear grills and like animals have escaped. Help me Whoa. survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, and and like that's that's a thing. And like that that interactivity, especially right now during the pandemic, it gives people another way to interact with entertainment. Yeah, and, uh, I think it's those type of innovations that that type of outside thinking is really gonna go far. So yeah. um, definitely that I, I feel like this is something that you should um, you should definitely foster and 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 kind of. Oh, uh, again, unemployment is going to bring it straight to the forefront. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, well, Rob, I mean, you actually summed up all my questions at the end already in your amazing. Uh, uh... <laughs> I feel bad because I feel like every time you've asked me a question, I then would talk for 10 minutes. And no, so, no, I dude. Like, like, first off, once again, I have to say thank you. We somehow circled back around to my favorite part of the hobby, which is role playing games didn't expect that at all yeah it was awesome it was really cool no, um, um but no no i like, guess the the last thing i would like to ask you for uh our audience is you know if our audience would like to find out more about what you do your writing you know some of your shorts um uh any other future projects where can they find you um twitter you know at rob kirkovich um he is always a uh, I'll post on that every three months so you can check that out. Uh, uh, I think if you look me up on Vimeo, you can try to see some of the ludicrous stuff that I've made. But uh, And you can also, uh, I have a podcast called Film or Movie that okay. you can check out. Um, that is on Apple and Spotify and all those other uh, podcast sources uh, where myself and three other guys kind of break down um, a semi-new release and then we pair it with uh, a, a movie that's 10 years old or older to see if that holds up. And then we try to determine if they're both films or movies and what that means. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and it's fun. You know, it's just something we used to do it um, about five, about six years ago. We did about 70 something episodes of it. And then we took a break when we all had kids. And then again, pandemic starts up. What else are you going to do? <laughs> Fire up your old movie podcasts. Um, so uh, we've been doing that. Um, we're about to get to episode 100 pretty soon. So, uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's been really that's been really fun. It's called Film or Movie. Definitely. Oh, guys, please check that out. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, well, it's been great. Once again, Rob, we, uh, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time out of your night to be able to talk to us and and reminisce about your gaming hobby your your career and just all the things going on with you once again thank you so much for being on cheers we truly appreciate it man thank you it's a pleasure anytime <laughs>